So, you finally realize you want to buy a Miata? Let me show you what you should look for before you buy. So I get asked this a lot when people go to buy Miatas that I know. And it's probably because I bought, I don't know, five, six of them on my own. And there's some telltale signs you want to look for when you're buying your first or second or 20th Miata to make sure that you're not getting shafted. We're going to start with the exterior of the car. It's the first thing you see when you pull up and it's, there's some big red flags that should tell you whether or not to walk away immediately. The first thing you're going to want to look for when you show up, and this is the biggest red flag, if you see this, unless you're okay with you know a rotting, falling apart car, is going to be rocker rust. Miatas, especially north of, like, we'll say Virginia, in the Rust Belt, are notoriously bad at rotting away. Uh, we get salt up here, we get rain, we get everything, and when it comes together, it's the perfect storm for just a clapped out Miata. So, the reason it happens is because rain rails don't drain, and people never check, and over time, water just builds up in the rockers and it starts to rot from the inside out. So if you see it on the outside of the car, it's already too late. It can be fixed. I'm gonna admit this car has had rocker rust fixed before and it looks incredible still three years later. It's expensive. I mean, you're looking at probably around two grand to have it done by a professional if you want it done really right. Uh, it's, you know, that's cutting out the old rust, hopefully sealing off whatever's inside patching new metal on which sometimes is a custom job and then painting over top and making it look like factory so i'm going to show you this rocker uh, both of these are perfectly mint still which is great and i'm going to show you kind of where to look for rocker rust so back here on this is the rear wheel this is in front of the rear wheel right there's a driver's side door this is where you'll see rocker rust so if you ever run your hand down along the bottom here you'll feel it start to bubble uh, this one has absolutely no rocker rust. And the other spot that you can see, let me turn the light on. If you look in the wheel well here, this section here will also start to rust before the outside does uh, because it will poke through this metal before it pokes through the outside. That's true for both sides of the car. So there's no difference between left and right. If it's rusting on one side, it's probably rusting on the other. And in my opinion, that's a good sign to run unless you're either buying a winter Miata which was sweet, uh, or you just want some like clapped out drift missile, then go for it. But the cars that I tend to work on and build with my friends, if we put the time and money that we did into them and they were rotting out, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So that's number one. Always check for rocker rust the first time you see a Miata. The next thing you're gonna wanna look at is the top. Uh, this car does not have a hard top on it, sadly. Uh, it did when we bought it, but my mom never used it, so we sold it. This is a soft top. This is not an OEM soft top. Uh, you can tell because it's a vinyl material and not like the, it's almost like a clothy feeling material if it's a factory top. These cars are 30 years old. I would be extremely surprised if you find one with a factory top that's still in good condition. Uh, if you do, that's probably a, probably a really good sign that the rest of the car is in good shape. But this, this has been replaced, which is fine. Uh, I've replaced tops before. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this one has a zipper window. So you can see here, there's a flap down here, and if you go into the car, there is a zipper that will drop the window. This one is plastic. And you drop the window and pull the top down. But the main thing you're gonna wanna look for is holes. They tend to, you'll poke holes where all these ribs are. It's just high stress points. You can kind of see it rubs through a little bit and it looks a little different than the rest of the car. So uh, check these for holes. Uh, you can also check kind of down here and in the pinch points back here. If the top has holes, it's not the end of the world. It's 250 or 300 bucks to buy a new top from Robbins. You can swap it yourself with some friends over a, like a painful one day event. Definitely not something you need to walk away from the car from if it has a bad top. Just know that you'll want to replace it or run a hard top or you know maybe you don't care because you only drive it on nice days. But I like the top. If I go into work, I put the top up even if it's going to be nice all day and I don't want birds pooping in my car when I'm parked at the office. So, tops number two. The next thing you want to look at is the paint. So this car is, besides the rockers, totally original paint. It's a 1990, it's been buffed, it's been 
polished, it's been everything, it's got ceramic coating on it. So this paint is a very good condition for its age. If the car has been in an accident, some things you want to look for are body panel gaps and mismatched body panels. So you can color match a panel. Uh, if you've seen my front bumper on my K Miata, it's a little bit different of a shade of white. It drives me nuts, but it's very hard to get an identical match when you're respraying just a panel. So if you see a car and maybe this is a darker shade of red than these two parts here or you know the door is a little different looking there's no rock chip guard underneath it that's a big red flag that the car's been in an accident and you know there might be something that you're not seeing from the outside uh, and potentially something to make you walk away if you're looking for like a mint street car sometimes carfax doesn't show everything so don't rely solely on that do your own inspection but body gaps and, and things like that are big. You can tell that this has a very even body gap coming up here. Uh, the gap around the headlights very even. And if you were to look at the gap on the driver's side and compare it to the gap on the passenger side, it's identical. So this car has never been apart. Uh, this car has never been painted. And if it has, it's been done by somebody who actually knows what they're doing. Everything bolts up straight. Uh, these panels here, there's no weird overlaps. Uh, there's no pinch points or anything like that. So take a look at that. The other telltale sign is this black strip down here. Most times when people repaint Miatas, I'm not sure why, they will get rid of this black strip. They'll color match to the rest of the body and you'll just have this continuous line down to the bottom of the car. Uh, that's big red flag. Obviously on a black car, it's gonna be black and you won't see it because it's no different. It's just the same single stage black paint. But the other thing people will do on top of that is you can see there's this weird orange peel texture here on the door and on the, the quarter panel back there and on the bottom of the fender. There's a factory rock guard built into this paint and when you repaint it, a lot of people will sand through it and this will be smooth. Uh, mine's been sanded through on my car because it's been repainted and I had it done by request. I wanted it to be smooth and look nice. So always look for the rock guard and the black stripe. It should go all the way down. It should go all the way to the front fender and it should go all the way around the back. Both sides, same thing. Uh, there's nothing on the front or the back bumper, but this is a telltale sign that the car has been resprayed. If you have a rust-free car with good paint and it hasn't been resprayed by some hack, you're really, you know, that's 80% of buying a Miata. Uh, everything else can be replaced with some ease, but we're going to get on to the engine bay next. So what are some things you want to look for in the engine bay of a Miata? If it is totally stock, Good step one. If it's been modified, if there is, if there's something like an intake over here, like a filter intake here, or you know something's been spray painted, then someone, somebody has been in there and somebody's modified it. And not necessarily the end of the world. These are very easy to modify, but it should key you in to start looking other places for other things. Some good first things to look for are the radiator. Uh, if you saw in our last one of our last Wednesday videos, we replaced the radiator. If they're not, this one is actually OEM, it's still got all the Japanese stuff on it. Somehow this radiator hasn't turned brown. A radiator that looks like chocolate milk is a dead giveaway that it's about to pop. Again, not a deal breaker. Radiators are like a hundred bucks and you can replace them in an hour, hour and a half by yourself. But add it to your list of to-dos. The other thing is spark plug wires. Factory Miata wires are black and they do not last very long. You'll start to get weird misfires and the car just won't run, run right. So these are cheap, these are NGK blues. Everybody runs these on Miatas. Uh, look for those, uh, not a big deal, but definitely add it to your budget list if you need to replace plugs and wires. Always a good thing to do in the first place. But as you can see, this engine bay is very stock. So everything is still here, nothing's broken off, uh, but some other things to look for, you're going to want to look for oil leaks. So you've got a rear main seal up front, which I'll show you that. Um, the valve cover is a big leak point. So back here, that's your cam angle sensor on a 1.6. On a 1.8 is going to be on this side, and the coil packs will be over there. Check around that for leaks. There's an O-ring around there that likes to go bad, and it'll leak down the bell housing, and it'll look like a rear main seal leak. Look there first. That's like a $3 O-ring much easier to do than a rear main seal and like if that's all that's leaking you're golden valve cover gaskets are next uh, look all the way around this rim here on the valve cover and make sure you don't see any oil pooling again not a big deal to replace but it's just another thing you have to do when you buy a miata so 
uh, take a look for that. And then if the car has an under tray, there's also a good, that's a good point to look for other leaks. Uh, you could have coolant leaks that you don't see or oil leaks from the front main seal and stuff like that that are dripping down on that under tray and they're catching and they're just pooling up there. So take a look there. The under tray can tell you a ton of stories that you won't see just by looking at the car. Another important spot to look is at the brake and clutch master. So you can see here, there's a fill, full line and there's a minimum line, or max and min. The fluid in here is definitely not like brand new, but you can tell it's in pretty good shape. It's not pitch black. You can pop the lid off pretty easily if you want and just take a double, like, double check inside. Make sure there's nothing leaking around here. Make sure the uh, down here on the brake master should be dry. All right, there's just some random road grime on there. And the other spot, which is notoriously bad in Miatas, is the Clutch Master. So I've replaced this one. Uh, it's full. If you want to check the color, uh, they tend to go black very fast, which I don't understand why, but uh, pop the lid off, uh, you know, give it a quick smell, make sure nothing seems off. This one probably needs a fluid flush. But, you know, make sure none of these lines are leaking and that this is full of fluid. If this is low, it's a closed system, so if this fluid is running low, you have a leak somewhere. And you'll wanna look into a new clutch and slave combo. Again, not a big deal. You know, it's like 30 or 40 bucks to do the whole system. But it's something that if it's not addressed, will leave you stranded on the side of the road. The last spot you're gonna wanna look while you're in the engine bay, at least from my experience, is at the crank so that's this pulley down here you want to look around that for leaks look around the bottom of the oil pan I'll get us underneath the car and show you if there's oil behind that it means that your front main seal is leaking and you're just gonna slowly pump oil out of the front of your car every time you park it you'll have drips here and there uh, definitely something if that's going bad it's a good sign that the timing belt and the water pump haven't been replaced in a long time and you'll have to do the whole gambit 100 bucks gets you the whole set, not very hard to do with some friends, but again, another thing to add to your list. forgot to mention one more thing. Hoses are a good thing to check. So a good squish of a hose will tell you a lot. This is pretty firm and it comes back to its original shape. Miatas that have high mileage, if you squeeze these, they'll feel very soft and they'll actually kind of be brittle in your hands big red flag that that's going to blow soon. Uh, the lower one, which is down there. Uh, I'm not going to reach my hand there because I just drove this car. You'll want to replace both of them at the same time. You'll want to check your belts too while you're in here. Uh, these are also brand new, but you'll want to look for like excessive cracking if you can see. So here's the power steering and AC belt and there's the alternator belt. If you don't have power steering and AC, you won't have a belt over here. But if you look at the flip side of the belt, that's kind of that what faces the gear. You'll want to look for cracks like dry rotting cracks and things like that. Those are big red flag that general maintenance hasn't been done on these cars and you'll want to go in and tear the whole front end of the motor apart and do your time belt, water pump, accessory belts, front main seal, all that stuff, thermostat. These are generally things that when people buy Miatas, I tell them to do anyways. You can get in and refurb the whole front end of these cars for under 150 bucks and it's really good peace of mind. So even if they look old, it's something that doesn't even concern me because if they look brand new I go in and replace them anyways keep that in mind just take a look at them it, it'll set the precedent for the rest of the car if general maintenance hasn't been done up here so for the next part here we're gonna get kind of hands-on with it I've switched you guys over to the handheld mount for the GoPro and I'm gonna run you through kind of underneath a lot of times people tell you to go take it to a, a shop and have them do a once-over for you I have never done that before when I bought a car uh, I don't have the time either that or the car like these if one of these posts for sale for a good price, you know there's gonna to be tons of people coming to look at it. You need to move on it and there's no time to go set up something with a shop and have them put it on a lift. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on the ground when you are looking at the car in person at this random guy's house. So for that, we're gonna go up front underneath and I'm gonna show you what a front main seal hopefully doesn't look like when it's leaking. So I'll show you this one on my mom's car, which I hope is not leaking, but I'll show you where to look. Here's the crank pulley we were talking about earlier, and there's the oil pan surrounding it that I was talking about beforehand. So you can see right around here, there is some residual oil, so I don't 
it seems pretty dry to me, so I don't know if it's from beforehand when it was leaking and I replaced it, or if it's new. If it's recent, it's going to look very wet. So just keep an eye out for dripping oil. You can see the power steering rack doesn't have any new oil on it, so it's likely not a leak. Uh, not an existing leak as I clean that off. So that's the first spot you're going to want to look for a front, front main seal leak. And then let's move on to the rear main seal and frame rails. So if you come around the side of the car, these are your frame rails right here. So this is where you would jack the car off of right here at this intersection. If you look, they should be flat. Now, oftentimes people will jack the cars up at the wrong spot, somewhere right around here, and it'll crush the frame rail up and you'll see it'll be, you know, it can move up a good inch and pancake out. Not a big deal, but you can tell it's just kind of been mishandled if it looks like that. So look on both sides, make sure they are solid, not rusty, and flat. Uh, the first Miata I ever bought, I looked underneath it and it looked really nice. It was shiny black and great. And I was like, oh sweet, getting a good deal on this thousand dollar Miata. Got it home and I had a lift at that point, put it on the lift and the guy had stuck one of those like Sunoco stickers to it and spray painted the whole thing black. So from a distance it looked fine, but in reality there was like a three inch hole, like a three inch wide hole in the frame and uh, there's no fixing that at that point. I drove the car for like three years and scrapped it, but uh, yeah, so look at that. Look at both sides. Stick your hand underneath and, you know, work on both sides. You'll feel there's brake lines on this side, or fuel lines, and you'll just want to make sure that it's fully solid all the way across. The other thing that I wanted to show, but I can't actually squeeze the GoPro down there now that the GoPro has this big light on it and this big fuzzy mic, is the rear main seal. So I'll throw a picture up of kind of where you should look underneath the car. If you push your head down on the pavement, you can see really easily where the oil pan ends and the transmission bell housing starts. That interface right there is where you'll see a leak come down and that can either be the cam angle sensor that we talked about earlier or your rear main seal. Not a big deal if it's the cam angle sensor. If it's the rear main seal, you need to either pull the motor or drop the transmission and pull the clutch and flywheel package off. So you've checked almost everything on the exterior except for the tires. I bought a Miata with a friend probably seven years ago now and when we picked it up the guy was for some reason ecstatic that it was still on the factory original tires. Mind you the car at that point was 23 years old and this is rubber and this is the most exposed rubber on the car so this thing gets cycled through uh, you know cold, hot, driving, not driving, all sorts of wear and tear of being moved around while you're driving. Tires crack, tires rot, tires fail. There's a good way to check, a couple things you want to look at when you're looking at a set of tires, so I'm going to show you that right now. There is a manufacturing date on there that you want to consider, and then if you look inside the tread grooves and you see any cracks, uh, you're going to need new tires immediately. Like don't even drive on cracked tires because you're going to hit a bump or something and it's going to pop on you and you're going to be stuck on the side of the road or worst case, crash your brand new car. So if you look around the tire here, you can see inside of these grooves there's no cracks or anything like that. What it'll look like is a, uh, I'll try and throw a picture up of what it looks like, but you'll see cracking in here and sometimes you'll see cracking along the face or you'll see it down here in the uh, rubber portion or the, the smooth portion of the tire. Uh, these are a couple years old so these are good. Uh, you can also do a fingernail test and kind of poke your fingernail in here and see, if, see how it accepts a fingernail imprint. The other thing you want to look for is uh, right here, let's see if we can focus on it. Uh, at the end of the DOT rating on these tires, there is a oval with four numbers in it. So this one is 4615. So what that means is these tires were made in 2015 on the 46th week, which I don't know what that is, probably October or something. So these tires are actually five years old. Typically on my car, I go through tires about once every two years because I run 100 treadwear tires. Five years is probably okay. Uh, Really, once they're getting around seven, I'd be kind of nervous about it. So these tires probably have one year left on them before I'm gonna kind of push my mom to buy another set. Street tires for Miatas, 14s and 15s are cheap. Do not skimp out on just like, oh, they're fine, whatever. Replace your tires, doesn't hurt. And you know, 
better traction, you can have more fun in the car, you can drive it through some twisty roads. So next, once you've done the exterior, you've looked at the engine bay, you checked the oil, you've looked underneath, and you still think you want to buy the car, we'll move on to the interior because that's the easiest part to fix and really means matters the least when it comes to buying a Miata. So before you get in, just take a look around, kind of assess the situation. You can see this car is extremely stock, except for the radio, but it's got manual windows, manual, it's got no options over here. So there's no cruise control and there's no power mirror switch. There's no manual power window controls over there. The seats are in good shape. The steering wheel is in pretty decent shape for a 30 year old car. Definitely could use a new wheel, maybe. But the dashboard is not cracked anywhere. The carpets aren't torn up. Everything's here for the door. The seals are in good shape. This is a good time to look at your trim seals and your soft top seals. Uh, if these are missing or cracked, you're gonna let rain into the car. So look at, all, look at all those things before you even get in the car. And then once you're in the car, have another quick look around. So this car does not have a factory stereo, so it's been modified by somebody. This thing is probably 15 years old at this point. But that's really all that's not factory in here. You know, the eyeball vents are still solid. Um, it's got both lights. These work. This one, oh, there we go. This one works, it's a little finicky. It's got the cigarette lighter. Uh, it has the center console. It's got this uh, ashtray, which is so 90s. Uh, it has all the gauges and they, at this point, all look good. Uh, it's got your mileage. So here's, up top is your mileage. This one shows 81,389 miles. Uh, it has, this dash hood is not cracked. These tend to crack as they get old and the cars start to sit in the sunlight forever. Uh, this dashboard isn't cracked over here. If you ever look right here uh, on my Miata and Dylan's Miata, there's a crack right here. Uh, it's just the support underneath. Not a big deal. It doesn't really affect drivability, but we're trying to buy nice Miatas here. So, Another thing to think of when you get in the car is how does it smell? With the soft top and the fact that this car is 30 years old, it's very possible that there is a leak in here somewhere and if it is and it's sitting outside the car will smell musty big red flag these cars were built to be driven in the rain and honestly driven in the snow they shouldn't leak water so if there's a musty smell inside big red flag that there's a water leak somewhere whether it's coming in from the trunk or from the the roof here the roof seal along the front windshield or where it meets the doors it's pretty common as these cars get older to have a little, little leak here and there, but definitely something to look out for any weird smells when you get in the car. You also want to smell for things like fuel and just things that don't belong inside of a car. If it smells like oil, if it smells like gas, there's likely oil burning somewhere and it's kind of ingrained in the carpet, or there's a fuel leak because the fuel tank is right here under this parcel tray. So just consider these things. Uh, none of them are really critical but if there's leaks you're it's something you're gonna have to address and ideally something you can talk the owner down on be like oh you know this car smells like gas something's not right try and bring them down in price don't scumbag them but you know be be respectful but know what you're getting yourself into so you've checked over the interior the exterior engine aesthetics for simple leaks and you've looked underneath for any other leaks and things like that next up is gonna be start the car and just listen first don't hop in the car and drive it immediately. There's some other things you want to look for and listen for before your first drive. I hope the outside traffic's not too loud. I live on a pretty busy street, but the car is running now. So a couple things you want to look for. Uh, any check engine lights, if it's a OBD1, so 90 to 95, your check engine light will flash or show up solid and you'll have to pin a jumper in the engine bay to check it. If it's an OBD2, you'll have a check engine light and you can plug in a reader. But give the car some time. You can see this is a 90 to 94, so it's got real oil pressure. Make sure you're reading on a cold-ish start, you should be above 30. Uh, this car is pretty cold right now. You can see we're just at sea. So once it warms up, it'll probably be 25 to 30 pounds. 
Uh, engine RPM should be right around 850 once it warms up. Uh, it's cold starts, it's a little higher than normal. Fuel gauge works. Uh, speedometer will have to see when the car is moving, obviously. But keep an eye on this gauge, make sure it does move up. It should stop right below vertical, so it should be right if it was a clock, be around 11:30. And then make sure that you know things here work. So if you put your, you know, drop the e-brake. Make sure that the e-brake works. Make sure that the e-brake has tension, right? So in theory, this brake could come all the way up to here, but it's stuck here. So I know the e-brake works. If I put the car, well, the car's already in neutral, and the e-brake's pulled, I can't push the car when it's running and the e-brake's pulled and it's out of gear. So those are a couple things you wanna look for inside, right when you turn the car on. Try to smell for exhaust leaks or listen for exhaust leaks. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to look for and listen for in the engine is tapping. So these are hydraulic lifters and all the way up to an NB, so 90 to 97 will have hydraulic lifters. When you turn the motor on, if it sounds like it has really fast rod knock, it's likely lifter tick, not the end of the world. I will post a video in a couple of weeks on how to rebuild your lifters so they don't tick, but pay attention to that. And you'll wanna look at a couple other things in here before you get moving. 90 to 91 and a half Miatas came with a short nose crank where the crank is actually shorter up front than all the other years. And what happens is the keyway that holds that crank pulley on will start to fail and you'll see the pulley start to wobble. So this one, let me see how close I can get you, is running very true and very stable. If you see it wobbling back and forth, there is no good fix for that really besides these like keyway savers. I don't know how well they work, but typically it means that the crank would need to be replaced. And at that point, you're just better off putting a new motor in it. There's a couple band-aid fixes that get you through a period of time, but I don't know how much I trust them. Another thing you want to do while you're here is check your motor mounts so you can't really see anything because they're covered in metal when they're sitting in the engine bay once the car is running you can see if they're bad by just giving it a quick rev so the motor doesn't really tip a whole lot in this case if your motor mounts are bad you'll see the motor start to you know this is exaggerated but you'll see it really start to tip out of its home or if you look flat on the motor won't be flat in the engine bay. It'll kind of sit crooked a little bit, uh, depending which side is bad. Something you'll want to consider. You know, another one of those things I tell people to replace no matter what. But if that's all good, it's time for a test drive. So you've checked the car over internally, externally, looked at the engine and everything, and you think you're ready to take it for a drive. If you can, I suggest doing this without the owner of the car. Uh, oftentimes the owner comes with you and you feel bad and you don't want to beat on the car really or not beat on the car but you don't want to push the car to its paces to see you know if there's anything that the owner has been trying to hide first things you're going to want to look at as you're starting to drive are definitely check the brakes make sure that they work and definitely check to feel that the clutch feels right NAs and maybe NBs are very prone to clutch slave and master failure so it'll feel like the clutch is, you know, just something's not right, it doesn't grab fully, or, you know, it grabs way up top. And typically, that's because the clutch slave is starting to go. Uh, it'll leave you stuck on the side of the road without warning. You know, you'll just be driving one day, and you'll be like, oh, this feels kind of funny. And then the next time you put your foot on the clutch, it's going to go straight to the floor, and your car is going to be stuck in whatever gear you're in. And you're going to have to wait for a tow truck. You know, there's no real limping at home. So check that. Uh, brakes. They should feel solid. If they're spongy, there's probably air in the line. The lines haven't been bled in a long time. And, you know, simple to bleed, but just another thing. How does the car feel? You know, take it through some turns, take it through some S turns, make some hard turns at intersections. Does the suspension feel way too soft? If so, the shocks might be blown. If it feels nice and, you know, factory firm then great this car somehow on 30 year old suspension still feels like it rolled out of the factory floor uh, there's there's stock shocks oem everything has not been replaced in 30 years but i've driven miatas where you hit a bump and the whole back end like kind of dips and dives on you red flag that you're probably going to want to put some suspension on it if you're planning on lowering the car anyways you don't really care Check your lights, you know, turn signals. Do they auto off when you center the steering wheel? Is there hyper flash anywhere? 
do the pop-up headlights work that's key you know if the pop-up headlights don't work just walk away don't even bother because that's like the best part of an na uh, you might as well buy an nb if you don't want the pop-up headlights i like to do a little loop of stop and go traffic and also expressway that's mostly what i will drive a car in like stock condition on so my hatchback or this car or you know just a, a daily driver uh, if you're building or if you want the car to go drive some back roads go drive some back roads find some windy roads near you but remember it's not your car don't crash this dude's car uh, he'll be in a world of hurt and so will you so just drive the cars respectfully but definitely run them through their paces on the highway it's very common for a stock miata without a hard top or a roll bar or frame rail braces or anything like that to have what's called a cowl shake so going around 60 to 65 miles an hour, you'll feel the, feel the steering wheel start to kind of just vibrate back and forth a little bit. Totally normal. Uh, I bet you every stock Miata has it. Uh, it's easy to fix, easy to remedy if it bothers you. This car's got 81,000 miles on it and apparently it hasn't bothered any of the previous owners, including my mom. So take the car out, you know, make sure everything works, make sure everything feels good, make sure the radio works, all the lights inside the car work. Power windows if you got them, cruise control, obviously a good time to check it. Air conditioning, you're gonna to wanna to check that while you're driving. Uh, this car has it, but it does not work. Not a surprise, it's a 30 year old R12 system, so it's probably all leaked out by now. Uh, you know, run it through its paces, just like you would any other car. There's, uh, besides the cowl shake, there's no real quirks of a Miata that you drive on the street that's in factory condition. Once you've done the test drive, you wanna bring it back and let it sit for a minute and look for any leaks. It's possible if the owner's kind of scumbaggy that they've hidden some leaks or patched some things up that are just good enough for like the initial showing and they might show themselves after a quick little drive. So, you know, take the car out, drive it around, bring it back, pop underneath and look, to, look at the spots we talked about earlier, your front main, your rear main, uh, around the valve cover, things like that. Just give it a once over, it doesn't hurt. Another thing to take into consideration is know what you're buying the car for. Uh, obviously I said you know walk away if there's rust and things like that if you're buying the car to make a drift toy uh, you know an autocross toy a track beast whatever uh, a winter Miata if you're cool if it has rust none of those four scenarios you probably don't and you, you probably don't care if it has rust if you're gonna do any of those four things uh, so obviously you know as long as it's mechanically sound or if you're mechanically capable maybe that doesn't even matter maybe you just want this clapped out miata to slam and you know drive to h2o once a year but take into consideration what you're building the car for so some things might matter to you some things don't the idea behind this episode is to kind of cover all the bases and if you want to buy a clean miata these are the things you want to look for uh, and you know if you want less then obviously take out what you don't care about but that's a wrap thanks for watching if you like this smash the like button if you want to see more hit the subscribe button we've got some killer content coming for you guys these wednesday episodes are just kind of here to limp us through to build season when we're gonna boost the k we're gonna boost dylan's vvt motor everything's getting more fuel everything's getting more power and we're just here to build some sweet cars and take you guys along for the journey so thanks for sticking around comment down below with some other things you want to see maybe some other ideas this is probably the last nice day that I'm going to be able to drive any of these cars. So i got to film whatever I need to today. Hopefully I'll get everything done. And uh, we'll see you for some upcoming videos.